Good morning, family. We have got a lot to do today. We are still doing the pantry challenge. We are exactly one week into it. So far, it's been a success. Been feeling under the weather, as you all are aware. Watch my videos. Know that I was not feeling well starting on the 31st of December. But I want to get some breakfast. The husband absolutely loved the casserole we made, you know, the Christmas morning casserole with the artisan bread and the egg custard with the French toast style. We're going to make that again today, but we're going to add some breakfast sausage to it. We did go to the store the other day and we picked up two packs of breakfast sausage because today I want to make biscuits and gravy. That's what we're going to have for dinner tonight. We're going to have biscuits and gravy and just some breakfast items. I might um, scramble some eggs. I might not. I'm not really sure. So we did pick up two pounds of breakfast sausage as well as a dozen of eggs. I do have to pick up my Azure order today. I was unable to make it to the drop, so I had someone from our drop to collect my items for me. Now I'm trying to schedule a time to go pick it up from them today. And then I need to go get my weekly sh herd share of milk and my dozen of eggs from the local farm. And then rest for the rest of the day. So we need to get some bread made so I can make some French toast to go into the freezer. We have a pack of link sausage in our freezer. I need to get those out so I can pre-cook those so the husband can have quick breakfast during the week with French toast and link sausage. Plus we need to make our artisan bread as well as our breakfast for dinner. So let's get started. If you're new here, I want to say welcome. Please hit that subscribe button and while you're at it, hit that thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow to get the word out that you can have a busy life working outside the home and still be able to cook from scratch. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I need to make the bread for the French toast. I need to make the artisan bread. And I went ahead and took out two of our little bundles of bananas from the freezer because I do want to make a banana bread. And I need to update my inventory list. Let's go ahead and make the dough for our loaf bread so that I can do it rise. And then we will make our artisan bread. So in the stand mixer, I have two cups of water one and a half teaspoons of yeast. This is a quarter measure, so I need two of those plus one teaspoon. A half a cup of sugar. I have a quarter cup of oil. I am using olive oil. Use whatever oil you prefer. And we need one and a half teaspoons of yeast. I'm sorry, one and a half teaspoons of salt. What am I thinking? And so it's five to six cups of flour. I've mentioned this before. It all depends on the humidity in your area, in your house. If you're dry, it might take less flour. If it's rainy or snowing or high humidity, it could take more flour. So we're gonna start off with four cups of flour.
Now to determine if you need to add more flour. If it feels sticky, that's when you need to add flour. It's just plan it by ear. You might need only five. You might need six cups. You, ne you might need something in between those two. This dough makes a total of three pounds. You can either put it in a two pound loaf and a one pound loaf or three one pound loaves. I don't have three of those. I only have two. So we'll do a two pound and a one pound loaf bread. And we're just gonna knead that until a dough ball comes together and it's not sticking to the side of the bowl. Let's touch it. All right, I think that looks good. Now we're going to take it over to the island and knead it by hand. So I got a little bit of flour on my bench. Let's go ahead and scrape it out of the bowl and do some hand kneading for about eight minutes. What are your kitchen resolutions this year? Are you going to try to make more homemade scratch cooking? Are you planning on having a small garden? Whether it's in the ground or in containers? Are you planning on learning how to can? whether that's ready-to-eat meals or just food preservations in general? Are you interested in learning how to make homemade bread? Are you planning on working on a pantry? Start putting food in bulk up? What are your resolutions for 2024? Right, I think we have achieved what we were trying to achieve. It is not sticky. So I think we have enough flour in it. We have enough flour in our dough ball. I think we're good. So we're gonna bring it all together. Pinch that in. A little bit of oil. Covered with plastic wrap, and I do have a bread proofing setting on my gas stove. Have that turned on, and we'll put this in the oven until it proofs, doubles in size. That just speeds the process. And now I want to go ahead and make the yeast artisan bread for the breakfast casserole. So I have one and a half cups of water. One two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. We're going to start off with one and a half cups of flour to make a sponge. 
one and three quarters teaspoons of salt. We're going to mix that in there really well, make a nice sponge. Then we're going to add up to two cups of flour. Artisan bread is actually easier to make than regular loaf bread. No special equipment. I mean, you can make regular bread with no special equipment. But artisan bread is the easiest bread to make. There's no sugars. There's no oils. It's just water, yeast, salt, and flour. And just get in there with your hands. And just make some bread. It's a little sticky. Just adding a little bit of flour at a time, just so it's not, until it's not sticking to my hands anymore, or sticking to my surface. Just a little bit at a time. I think we are good. Notice I did not put no oil in this bowl. This is an artisan bread and I wanted to cook and have that that crustiness that artisan bread has and not the chewy outer crust regular sandwich bread has. So in the oven proofing until it doubles in size. And the other bread we need to make today is going to be biscuits. But we're not going to make that yet because I need the oven to cook the biscuits. But while we're waiting on the bread to rise, we can go ahead and get our sausage cooked. Now this is just pre-packaged sausage the husband and I picked up at the grocery store. It is two pounds. We're just going to cook those because one of them is going to go into the breakfast casserole and the other one is going to be for the sausage gravy to go with the biscuits. So I need to go ahead and get that cooked while the bread is rising. Now I just have two pounds of store-bought sausage. And I'm just going to brown that into this large cast iron skillet.
like I said, half of this will be for the French toast casserole, and the other half is going to be for dinner today, which is sausage gravy and biscuits. Let's go ahead and make some banana nut bread. This is just a recipe I found on the internet. We have the ingredients, so let's just do this. So I'm just using the one pound loaf pan. I have a little bit of cooking oil here. Because I do want to grease the bottom and the sides. I do want to line it with parchment paper just for easy removal. All right, we're going to set that aside. So in this bowl, I'm going to add two of our frozen bananas. You want an equivalent of three bananas, and that's probably what this is. oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I do want to give these a little smush. Just to break them up a bit. And I do want to toast the walnuts. So we need about a cup of walnuts. That looks about right. So while we're making the batter, I'm just gonna put the, the walnuts in the oven for about 10 minutes. A stick of butter, four ounces, eight tablespoons. And the butter is just at room temperature. We need three quarters cups of sugar. Two eggs. It didn't say to melt the butter, but I don't know if I like this. It doesn't look like it's going to break up in here very well. All right, we're just going to go with it, see what happens. We need one and a half cups of flour. One teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Alright, since the butter is not mixing in here, I think I'm going to go ahead and remove our loaf dough out of this mixing bowl so I can use this mixing bowl to put it in the mixer. So I'll just transfer it to a different bowl and I'm just going to put it on the stand mixer and maybe we can get that butter incorporated in there a lot better. Let's hope. 
So I started off with the dough hook and switched it to the paddle. There are still some chunks of butter in here, but it doesn't say melt the butter. It just says at room temperature. Maybe because it's cold in my house and it just wasn't softened enough. We're gonna go for it. I went in and took the nuts out of the oven. I do wanna give them a little, just a small chopping, cause I don't want, you know, big half walnuts in the final product. I'm just gonna run my knife through it. You can use a food processor if you want. I'm just being a little lazy and don't wanna wash additional dishes. I'm just leaving it right here on this parchment paper, just running the knife through it. All right, that looks good. All right, that's about a cup right there. Stir those nuts in there very well. And then we're going to pour this into our prepared loaf pan. Oh, oh, fudge. Do you see that family? <sighs> All right, so much for the parchment paper. I have never had this happen to me. Never. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. We got this. Never had parchment paper fold up on me like that before. Wouldn't be Grammy's kitchen if we weren't making mistakes, huh? Okay, well let's just hope it releases easy and I do want to put the rest of the walnuts right on the top it says we need to bake it for about 55 to 60 minutes so an hour set the timer for 50 minutes and then we'll check it all right, so now we're going to be making biscuits. So I have three quarters cups of milk. I'm just going to put in one tablespoon of white distilled vinegar. Kind of let that curdle so we can have a buttermilk texture. All right, set that aside and let it do its thing. So in the mixing bowl, two cups of flour. two teaspoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one stick, four ounces, eight tablespoons of butter, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the cast iron skillet in the oven to warm it up. All right, so we're gonna mix the butter, the flour, baking soda, baking powder, and butter. Just break up that butter into the flour mixture. And you're not gonna believe this, family. If you remember, I think it's been two months ago, or three months ago. I'll find the video and I'll put a link right there when we bought the butter, we bought a case of butter from Azure Standard. That was my very last stick of butter I have in the house. I have got to get my order today. Finally got in touch with the person who picked up my order for me to coordinate a time and a place to get it. Can't wait to get my butter. I have a little bit of butter in my butter dish that I usually keep on the counter. 
and that is it. There might still be two eight ounce butter in the freezer, but they're frozen. You're gonna do me no good at the moment. All right, so I think we got our butter all broken up in here, perfect. You can either use a three quarters cup of buttermilk, if you have it, one tablespoon of vinegar into regular milk, and that will give you that sour taste, like buttermilk. Buttermilk is not something I keep in the house, so this will work just fine. Let's get that all mixed in here really well. All right, I think that is it with the spatula. Let's get in here and then with our hands. Now, unlike bread, or rolls you don't want to work your biscuit dough that much you just want to get everything incorporated and then stop Just trying to pick up all the loose pieces, get it incorporated into this dough. Okay, we got everything in corporate. A little bit of flour on our surface. And I did not get my pastry cutter and I did not get my rolling pin that I really, really wanted for Christmas, but that's okay. We will end up buying it ourselves sometime this year. Right now we're gonna start folding in the thirds. This is where your flaky layers come from. And then fold it into thirds.
and then I'll fold it into thirds one more time. I think I'll do it one more time just so I can get a square out of this dough. And I want to cut this into 12s. All right, that looks good. You could use a biscuit cutter if you want. I'm not that precise. That's perfect. A very hot cast iron skillet. I want to put a little butter in here. Let's go ahead and put our biscuits in. Back in the oven. So this is our two pounds of cooked sausage. And like I said, half of this is gonna go into the breakfast casserole, half of it we're gonna make sausage gravy. But I wanted to remove all the sausage first so we can get building the gravy. So I have about a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter into this pan. I'm going to go ahead and add some pepper. And some salt. Didn't even bother washing the skillet. It's okay. We're going to add about two tablespoons of flour. Then we're going to slowly add in about two cups of milk. And once that milk heats up, it'll activate that roux and thicken up into a, a delicious gravy. Mm -hmm. 
the best formula for making homemade gravy for each tablespoon of fat a tablespoon of butter is one cup of liquid whether you're using a broth or water or milk or something like that we started off with two tablespoons of fat we did one tablespoon of oil one tablespoon of butter and then we put in two tablespoons of flour and made a roux salt and pepper and then two cups of milk so the formula is one 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 tablespoon of fat one tablespoon of flour one cup of liquid Now if you deviate from that formula, such as if you add more fat to more flour, less liquid, the thicker your gravy would be. If you put in less fat, less flour, more liquid, the thinner your gravy would be. But that is a great formula on how to make homemade gravy. And we're going to put in half of our sausage or one pound of sausage. Let everything heat up and then we'll taste it for salt and pepper. And we're waiting on the biscuits. And if it's too thick, we can always thin it with some more milk. If it's too thin, we can make a cornstarch slurry, which is dissolve the cornstarch in the water and then add it to your hot liquids. I think it needs a little bit more salt and pepper and then we're done. Let's check on the biscuits. Oh, they're rising beautiful. Okay, the biscuits are done. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. The banana bread is not quite ready yet. So it's been 50 minutes. I've extended it for another 10 to cook it for the whole hour. So our gravy and our biscuits. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. Look at that, it's beautiful. Some of our delicious homemade sausage gravy. And this is what we'll be eating on for all day. Because this is what I want. Mmm. That is so good. And I'm still waiting for the rest of the bread to rise. This is our sandwich bread that we're going to turn into French toast. And this is our artisan bread. Because I'm going to have to go really soon to go pick up my Azure order from the lady that picked up from the drop. I don't have time for this bread right now so I'm just going to stick these into the refrigerator until we come home and it looks like I'm gonna to have to clean that oven 
before we bake that bread because it is smoky up in here. I am so sorry the battery died. We're up and rolling now. So we're just going to roll this up similar to like the cinnamon rolls. Make sure we pinch that down. That is the bottom of our bread. Tuck in the ends. And drop it into the one pound loaf. And we're just going to let this sit right here on the countertop until it doubles in size. This is some banana nut bread. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, it's gorgeous. And it did take one hour. 350 degrees to cook this complete. Look at that, it's beautiful. It smells good. That has the perfect amount of sweetness with the bananas and that sugar. Mmm. Cup of coffee. Oh, this would be so good. We already ate lunch slash dinner with the biscuits and gravy. It was really good. I have a little bit left over right there. Gravy's in the bowl. The biscuits is in a plastic bag. Our artisan bread is in the oven baking. Our loaf bread is in the low pan doing its rise. Banana bread is done and it is so good. Sausage is in the refrigerator waiting for us to make that casserole. But we're waiting on that bread. So let me get the kitchen reset. Then I'll be right back. Okay, 30 minutes is up. Take the lid off. And we're going to bake it for another 25 minutes. Alright, so I ran out of steam and I had to call it quits. But let me tell you what we ended up doing before I quit. And then also, my battery died in the camera. I was having some major technical issues yesterday. But we got it all figured out. In a 375 degree oven, 30 minutes with the lid on, and then 25 minutes with the lid off. So that is done. We went ahead and made our loaf bread. We put them in the pans, let them do a second rise. And then once they reached doubled in size, I put it in a 375 degree oven for 45 minutes with the lid on. So I am so sorry, but this video is going to be continued till Thursday.